This is the most electrifying man in corpse entertainment, the Necro. Ah, sexual! Shut up. And you are watching Bloodlines. <laughs> And welcome to another fantastic, fabulous episode of Bloodlines. I'm Derek Soto. This is Marissa Ann, and of course we have Mr. Trevor Sternad. Nailed it! Ha ha! Nailed it! Bazinga! Yes! I was, I was like, Nailed question it. of the ages. I love that. How do you pronounce Sternad. your last name? Sternad. I love it. Because there have been so many. We went through a lot of last names oh, today. Oh man, I was about <laughs> to just slam this mic down in anger, but no, I man. quit. <laughs> Get out of my bus. <laughs> no, it's cool. No one knows it, man. I, I, I'm really uh, impressed, actually. Thank you. I tried to figure it out, and I was just like, let's go with this. Survey says. Survey and we got says. It. <laughs> we went, we were like, no, let's work this way. Maybe we'll work out here. Yeah. And we did. We did. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and we're Sternad. And we're here locked out at Stage 48 here in Manhattan, New York. Black Dolly Murder is on tour with Whitechapel. And so it's always fun in New York City. How's your day coming along? Uh, you know, it's a little hectic. Uh, the club here, um, we had some problems getting everything wired earlier, so it's been kind of a mad scramble. Production we had issues? To, yeah, yeah, we had to push the doors back and shit. And, um, well, whatever, man. It's fun. Mm -hmm. I was saying earlier, this is where I live now, but uh, mm -hmm. I can't go home today. Dun, dun, we're, dun. We're, dun, gonna, dun, we're, gonna, dun. Well, we're totally going to get to that. Kitty <laughs> man. <laughs> Kitty man, my cat. He's at home, and I can't see him today. Aww. But I'm thinking about him. All right, we're doing this, Kitty for, the, man. We're doing this for the Kitty man today. Kitty man. Dedication. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go right so, into the questions. All right, fire uh, away. You're up or am I up? So, you're up. I guess I'm going to start this off with, what are the concepts and topics that Nightbringers touches upon uh, since you since the album came out and I guess oh, people want to know it's definitely uh, the song Nightbringers in particular is uh, an anti-religious song um, it, it focuses on Christianity but I'm really against all religions I think that um, it's time that we stop um, believing make believe shit and killing each other over it etc hating each other you know it's hard enough to be human we don't need religion making it worse <laughs> Absolutely true. But uh, <laughs> otherwise, it's you know, there's it's a very it's a very Black Dahlia murder record, which is funny to say, but um, lots of horror, lots of fiction, you know. Um, but the song Matriarch, uh, the third song, is uh, based somewhat in reality. It's about a uh, a young woman who wants to be pregnant but can't, who stalks another woman and cuts the baby out of her stomach to take. Ouch. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and it's you know, it's. Um, Somewhat based on the movie Inside, the, the the French horror movie, which is awesome. I recommend that. It's very gory and gruesome. But also, there was this incident in Denver where, like, this couple was um, using, giving away free baby clothes on, like, um, Craigslist, I think, and luring, you know, trying to lure moms in, and uh, yikes, you know. Dude. So sometimes the real world is more brutal than death metal, I find, anymore. No. But um, we've got some necrophilia, which is a definite Black Dahlia standard. I think those are the songs. <laughs> the weirder and creepier shit I can write seem to be the songs that resonate the most. So that inspires me to get even weirder. <laughs> and now, you know, it's like it's hard to shock people, you know, kind of. Um, I think since the Internet's rise, uh, just, you know, the Internet era, people have been born into seeing shit porn since they were five. We've you been know, and gore, exactly to everything yeah. to everything that death metal is. The world has been vastly desensitized since um, 
you know, like the rise of the internet. So in a way, it's kind of taking the piss out of it because I remember like it's not fun anymore. Well, it's like, what do I do? You know? Like, yeah. Well, how can I, I? Where do I go from? How here? do I scare <laughs> all these flatlining sociopaths? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what, what's worse than a sociopath? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so you know, really, I do a lot of like very typical classic topics. Sorry, I had a little bubble there. Um, you know, werewolves, zombies, like shit that I think is, to me, is just death metal staples, you know, and I don't want to see, I'm not out to reinvent the wheel here, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I realize our place as a gateway band for a lot of young people, so with the artwork and themes and, you know, my, the parts that I contribute to the band, I try to embody what brought me into death metal, you know what I mean? Uh, the artwork that has the terrible place you don't want to go you know (laughs) the land the the land of horrible you know graves forever and well you know what we're we're about to venture back to the beginning since you want to talk about graves and stuff all right (laughs) yeah see well it's you know two years after the the black dahlia murder launched um the band was picked up by like colossal metal blade records um i was just wondering you know how did the band cross paths with brian slagle like in that short period of time uh, well, when I came in the band, like, uh, I had already been in a band that toured. I'm doing that with quote fingers because, you know, we left town and played some really shot shows at other people's houses. <laughs> but, you know, like, it it got it in my mind. That's like, all I wanted to do was tour. So when I came in the band, I'm like, guys, the goal, we're going to get some crap out. We're going to go on tour. And just start touring. So, you know, eventually we started to get a little bit better. We got on this, like, very small indie label. We put a CD out, then we got it reviewed as much as we could, took the snippets from it, you know, the best parts of the reviews, made our bio, and then made our pitch to, like, all of the labels, like 30 of them, you know, Metal Blade and, and Century and Nuclear Blast on down to, like, you know, your very, very um, indie labels and stuff, so. You guys really shopped around. There. We did, and we did, we, we got plenty of rejection letters, let me tell you, plenty of them. And uh, we were about to go with Willowtip, who I love. I still follow all the time. And I'm, now I've become very good, well, good enough friends with Jason that runs it. And, you know, we're always talking about new bands that are coming out. And so, you know, he doesn't hate us, fu- finally. But <laughs> but we he had the contract from, from Willowtip, and we were all about it. You know, like, all right, sick. Willowtip is a great, a great label to be on. I love all the bands, you know. But then uh, Metal Blade came knocking. They were, the like, the last label out of like 28 or whatever you know what i mean that like wow. we when they called we thought it was a joke like seriously <laughs> like it, it, it wasn't slagle that called but it was failey the number uh, the number two you know mm-hmm. and we didn't know who he was he's not as visible as as brian, as brian is so i was like i don't even know who that what is this i don't even know who that guy what, was, is was is it this, because of the shock is this real yeah was it because yeah. of the shock uh, kind of yeah that? you know and it was like i said it was so much later that all the rejection leaders came in and stuff that we had already like all right, you know, we're going to do this Willow Tip thing and, you know, try to take it from there. But, um, yeah, when Metal Blade called, I mean, that was the turning point. And, but we already had it in our minds um, that if we did get an opportunity that we were going to take it to the hilt and tour as much as possible. And, and you have. Yeah, for, so basically you know, one, of the, one of the things time. we talked to Metal Blade about was like, yo, man, put us in a vehicle and we'll go. That's all we need. About 15 years so of touring. I quit school right at that moment, said to Brian. Um, my parents thought I was insane. You heard it first, kids. Stay out of school. Stay out of school. <laughs> Stay out of school. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's, it's just awkward. It was for me anyway. But um, you know, I it was I got like a, an award from the English department for this thing that I wrote and shit. And like, my school trajectory was looking pretty good from that point. And um, I remember when I was accepting the award for what I wrote. They're like, what are you going to do next? I'm like, I'm going to quit school and go on tour in a van full of sweaty a-holes. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, well, they all looked at me like, you're so dumb. What, <laughs> I look. I but look, hey. look, it's working. It's you working. Know? We're still doing it. Hey, it's we're working. Here, and you know what? I hope you guys are watching. So yeah, what was seriously. this question about? Oh, it's how did we fool Metal Blade. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah, we sent them the package that had, um, it had, we made a demo that was after the, EP that we put out, and it's when we first got John K. So we it was the first time we had lead guitar. Mm-hmm. So we're like, all right, we got to show him what we're gonna do with the shit. So we sent him a CDR demo with three songs from Unhollowed, 
and then the EP, which had other songs that would end up on Unhallowed 2, uh, Blackest Incarnation and Closed Casket Requiem, and um, a bio talking about all the great things we did, which wasn't a lot, but, you know, you chant. We, we were looking for bits, and you know what I mean. Yeah, we got you shop good around, review bits, that, yeah. and like, hey, talk about yourself in the third person. The Black Dahlia Murder is <laughs> looking to take over the entire world with your help. Will you put out this record and give us a van? You spit the butt of the universe. Yes. <laughs> and um, not, not many people wanted to do that, but uh, Metal Blade did, and that was the turning point, dude. And Brian and I have honored the same pact that we made then. Like, we never say no. We're always on tour. We take every opportunity. The band is number one. It's no question. Of course. And, uh, I mean, look... Look all that we've been able to do, man. It's been amazing. So and the work ethic change. has has paid off, and you know now it's just I don't know. It's just been such a huge snowball. We've been very lucky, and you know from record to record, things have been growing. And still, eight eight records in, man. Yep. This is the eight biggest, the biggest one, yeah. So fucking, it's amazing, man. And it fucking slays. It's Thank you, absolutely. Thank you. I'm very excited. <laughs> now. <laughs> Here, here to Metal Blade and Brian. Hi, Brian. Yes, thank you yes. so much <laughs> for everything. For yes. I have nothing but great things to say about Metal Blade. Always, they're like our family, dude. Like, uh, I see bands that you know we're peers with that have such a rough like ride. Like they're trading labels all the time, and I can't imagine that we've been so blessed to be with Metal Blade and have that family yeah. aspect. When we go mm-hmm. to LA, they're all there, and it's nothing but hugs and and fun and Jaeger shots and you know <laughs> so um yeah man they've just i think they they i don't know Slagle saw something in us and i'm so glad he did and he still sees it well, I mean, yeah the, yeah man the, the, the band name totally speaks to a lot of people too i mean the actual black no that was murder. that was cool uh, that uh, we found days. we found something that like should have been taken a long time ago, basically. I know, yeah, it's, a, it's so crazy. I still watch Unsolved Mysteries. Like, it's just like it's just never got solved. It's oh, yeah. Well, when I learned about it, it scared the shit out of me as a very seasoned death metal head who you know, thinks about babies getting torn out or whatever you know, all the time. It's, mm. That's death metal. So <laughs> something in real life scared me so bad, I was like, that's the name of the man. That's right it. It's going like, to stick. That is so brutal. <laughs> and then I kind of realized the... Um, you know the whole background story, blah, blah, blah. You know, the girl moves to Cali with stars in her eyes, wants to be, you know, the next big movie star, cut down brutally. It's kind of like the death of the American dream, you know what I mean? It's heavy. Yeah, it is. No, it's it heavy, is. heavy, man. <laughs> going on to heavy stuff, because we already know it's you got a lot of things going here. But uh, you guys enter a new chapter in your career with, uh, you know, Ryan Knight having stepped down as the Black Dahlia Murders guitarist. Uh, you know, how many guitarists did you search through before you finally recruited Brandon Ellis? He was uh, the first one. He was, he was one? Ryan's choice. We were like, uh, well, Ryan told us he was leaving the band about like a year and a half in advance just to be as friendly as possible, as amicable as possible, help mm-hmm. us every step of the way into, like, going into the next phase. And, and we're like, who's it going to be, dude? And you'd know better than us. And he's like, I think Brandon, man. So, and he called it well, I mean, I for sure. Them. Like what? Like what were you looking for specifically? And like what were the factors taken into consideration to make that decision as a band? I mean, we kn- we knew he'd worked really hard. He's toured with a bunch of different bands, filling in from Silosis to Fin Troll. You know, he's out there. Um, was, he's still with Arsis. You know. Uh, yeah, he's still obviously with where Arsis. we got Ryan from too. So. You know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if Jim, you know, gives me a black eye someday. But because you're still. But no, he's crew. super cool. He's <laughs> Jim's cool. He's about the chillest guy in the world. But anyway, um, you know that he had amazing chops. He was wise beyond his years. You know what I mean? Like musically, what he likes and where he comes from is like, it's not what your average, you know, 25 year old is into. You know, it's not yeah. yes and Toto and shit like yeah, that. Exactly. That's weird. You know what I mean? Like, he's a uh, you know very. You know, like, I think the most, he's a completely self-taught, but he's the most educated musically that we've ever had in the band, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, bringing him in was like, but he's a logical step for Ryan, too, because they're both from the same school of 80s shredders, you know, like the Mm -hmm. Aussie guitar players and shrapnel records and that kind of stuff. So it was a super natural transition. And with Ryan's help, everything was just so flawless that, uh, you know, I mean, we have nothing but love for Ryan and everything he did for us. And 
you know, I saw a shelf life on when he came into the band because he left, like, his kid was just born. He drove from the fucking hospital in Chicago to come out and meet up with us for the first time, you wow. know? So it was like, well, this is amazing. We're bringing in this amazing player, but someday he's going to have to go do that dad thing. And, you know, that that's what happened. we can't, you know, we can't fucking yeah. refute. Yeah. We can't be turds about that. You know, yeah. it's like, come on, man. This is real life. So, you know, he, he's... um. He's moving to Nashville, and I think he's um, gonna try to get in the country scene, which is he, what he really likes to do. Wow. He plays all kinds of music. He's you know he's incredible at guitar. So. So if you're in Nashville, go stalk. Go Ryan see now. Ryan. He's got a um, a solo record coming down the pipes too, man. That's gonna have it's gonna be metal, country, fucking everything, dude. It's gonna. That's badass. Very genre oh, bending and very cool. Like the uh, shredders, we're gonna rejoice when this comes out. Country metal. Oh. Be all kinds of shit. That's a, I got it. But he's a badass for sure. So, nothing but love to Ryan. We actually saw him earlier yeah. in the tour in Chicago. He came oh, out and hung wow. out, and many hugs and drunken stories were fucking swapped. As, as always. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I mean, you know, country's in Nashville, but it, country's not so prevalent here in New York City. And you know, you guys have shown a real sweet spot for New York City. And uh, you know, you guys played Summer Slaughter in Manhattan at Webster Hall. I don't know if I said that once or twice. And then, you know, uh, they played 2011 Summer Slaughter. Oh, uh, dude, and New York was one of the first spots to catch on to the band, one of the first spots to really wile out, like when we were playing back at um, the old knitting factory and shit. Mm. Man, I remember that's some a, crazy a, a shows. Relic. I remember people were going insane. That's a relic. I remember showing my, I spread my butt cheeks and showed my bare <laughs> asshole to the crowd there. I remember that. <laughs> I wouldn't do that now, but, uh, God damn you know, it. just, just don't, don't let time forget that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what is like the most like significant uh, thing for you about New York City that made you like want to move here? Like, what was? Like, oh man, that, it was um, on that were... that tour that was before BDM. You know, it, it was in like 2000, year 2000, basically. I came out here on that goofy tour with my old band, and you know, went record shopping at Generation. Fucking He's still there. Went, uh, yeah, I still, still I've been there. going there since Thank I've been out here. God is still there. And um, you know, just everything about it was so awesome just so huge and so different from my you know michigan suburban world that um you know i dreamt if i ever left michigan which i'm still amazed that i did but <laughs> <laughs> but that i would come here you know so i mean it's been a riot so far uh, shows all the time i filled my calendar with shows and went to half of them you know what i mean like there's, there was so many and I was hungover sometimes, and, you know. Sometimes. We use the quotes now, sometimes. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's been awesome, you know, just being somewhere where there's more people plugged into the underground scene, the way underground scene. And, you know, if any bands are going to touch down in the States, period, if for one show, where's it going to be? Yeah, it's going to be here, you know. It's so. Be, yeah, that's the bottom line. Those are usually, like, those are usually like, some of the biggest shows. Mm -hmm. Right, and then you have Vitus, which is, like, always having that's that's where you had your record release party yeah yeah you know? and then well, that place is amazing dude parties, and uh me. and all the um every band that like comes to to mdf you know from like from far away lands they touch down there if Maryland anywhere Depressed. you know what i mean yeah, so from, like all over the united states and across you know across yeah the yeah so you know i've seen a lot of great shows in the short time i've been here and i look forward to the future a lot and uh just getting my fingers out here in the scene, I feel like something's gonna happen here that uh, is gonna be beneficial to the band, that I can do parallel to the band. You know what I mean? Uh, we have mail stripping. Yeah, yeah there it is. There it okay. is. You never know what happens at stage 48 after 11 p.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems well. Stick around. I saw. Yeah, some of those couches were looking pretty jizzy in there. Man. They were. There were some clouds on them shits for sure. There was some Pearl Jam has been flying around. For sure. Oh my god. Never heard it called Pearl Jam? <laughs> Pearl Jam pretends that that's not what they're talking about, but oh, obviously. obviously. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna sideswipe <laughs> the Pearl Jam. <laughs> and we're gonna like completely inside swipe, you know, the show. Uh, you know, I know, we know that you're a classic video game nerd. Clearly it shows there's a Nintendo sixty four like right in front of us right now with Diddy Kong Racing and Super Mario sixty four. Uh E3 just, you know, happened this year. It just happened a couple days ago. Uh, you have any interest in modern releases as a gamer? Uh, well, or do you just I strictly strict retro? Like I had a PS4 
I, I lost it in the breakup, ah, which is so. And I, I, pr I put money into um, um, that game that the uh, Castlevania guy made. Oh, um, geez. It's like on all the stores now and shit. It just got released. It's basically, it's like the guy behind um, Symphony of the Night, which is like. One of the best Bloodstained. games. The game is Bloodstained. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so I have a, a download for Bloodstained, just no system to play it on right now, but. Um, I was into <laughs> I was into Bloodborne, I was into like the reboot of Skyrim, the the Skyrim HD one. Was, yeah. Skyrim took up a lot of my life for a while there. It does. It's like Warcraft. Pretty oh much. yeah, that was the the most like s sickest role playing game that I played. Like to me, that was very close to D and D, which I played a lot of it in my oh, youth. Yeah. So <laughs> stop, because now she's like all in interested now. It's just a big Warcraft and you know D and D. Oh, type oh I want to play D and D again. I want to roll polyhedrals again. It's been a while. It's been a while since Diablo too. So it's been wow. a fuck, man. Uh, I was playing um, Diablo three for a while. That was really fun. That was a really good one. Um, yep. <laughs> it's on PS4. Yeah, yeah, the PS4 one. It's good. Those were those were the shit. fun ones. Oh, so you're pretty much an RPG guy. You like uh, stuff like that? Largely, yeah. Even with the retro stuff, you know, like it's like the Final Fantasies, Dragon Warrior, Dragon <laughs> Quest. Yeah. Um, oh man, Legend of Dragoon. You know, for PS One, Vagrant Story, PS One, all that. Oh, jazz. there's a lot of really good PS One. I, I uh, still have my copy, games. so tr trust me, dude. Like, if I have to bring my entire collection on the bus, I will. will like, uh, never leave. Uh, you know, like, <laughs> I, I, I like new games, but you know, there's too much hand holding and. You know, like, it's hard to even play multiple new games at once because there's so many fucking buttons and, you know. Yeah, it just it eats up a lot of the time, too. You yeah, know? and there's, yeah, there's so much cinematics, too. I hate that shit. I fucking hate that shit about video games. <laughs> cinematics well, blow. <laughs> we're actually going to wrap this up and we're going to get to our last question for Word? you. Word? Yes. yes, sadly. No cinematics here. Stay. No. Yes, no it's only the real thing. I like cinematics. Action all the time. I like cinematics. <laughs> I'm from before cinematics, man. Final <laughs> Fantasy 1 was just, like, Painfully grinding for experience forever. Potato graphics. Yeah, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. Oh, two bits. <laughs> yeah, two bits. <laughs> so, um, you know, your vocals are quickly discernible when a Black Dolly Murder track like gets played, and you know, you've expressed many times that you're influenced by Jeffrey Walker of Carcass. Mm -hmm. um, which Carcass album turned like the light turned the light bulb on for you uh, as well, a vocalist? And uh, what were your thoughts on developing your own vocal style and while channeling that influence? Uh, well, it's. Tools of the Trade, the EP, which I have represented somewhat on my arm here. Yes. The uh, carcass tattoo, that's my first tattoo. And uh, that EP scared the shit out of me. And it had um, not only Jeff's vocals, but um, Bill Bill Steer. It was when they had the duel back and forth, like high and low, and a lot of layers of high and low together. And, like, you know, the, in the studio, we call it the death metal vocal harmony. There's that quotation again. <laughs> but, um, Take a shot every time we do Yeah, yeah. Seriously. So, you know, I was hearing that, and um, another vocalist that really, really affected me was um, Ben Falgos that sings for uh, Goat Horror, Soylent Green. Uh, we went to, during the very first Black Dahlia demo in 2001, we were recording all day, then we went to the show to see Immolation and Goat Horror, and seeing his stage presence and the way he like spoke with his hands and you know that just affected me so deeply and his high and low vocalist too uh that just blew my fucking mind like you know so i have no bones about saying that he's like my fucking hero i've told him many times you know? <laughs> we've been very fortunate to be around him a lot in his bands and uh but yeah it's all about carcass and uh and goat horror and um so I green but at first, I remember the high and low vocals I did weren't all that different, you know, on the demo. It took a, right, right. a long time to develop them, right. their own kind of personalities. But I don't consider myself a good vocalist. Um, I don't know what the Lies. fuck I'm doing. If someone asks me, like, how do you do what you're doing? Like, I, I try to avoid any interview like that because I seriously don't know how to explain it. I have no <laughs> fucking idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I, I like to think I make up with it with my charisma and hopefully my lyrics so people will check it out, but I don't know. <laughs> Future references. It just happens. Future reference. It just happens. <laughs> That's it. It could happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll not go to school anymore. And then yeah, 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 it'll all come together in an awesome homework. way. Dude, Trevor, man, it was an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the oh, time out. Oh, it's fun, out. man. Thank you. Thank you. Know, you. To, uh, to be here and... 
yeah, stage 48 right now. Uh, you guys are going on like 10.30 or something like that. Check out Nightbringers. It's on Metal Blade Records. It's been out since 2017. Charted Billboard. It's red. It's red. <laughs> it's red. Charted it's the one. red one. Number, uh, you guys hit 37, 32, something like uh, that? Ah, something like that. Something I don't like know, that. Man. Yeah, so it's freaking good. So please. Yeah, even regular people liked it. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Even even normal people. <laughs> That's the quotes again. You search the Black Dahlia murder, you know, you get two different things. It might be surprised what you find. Yeah, you can find a, a dead uh, woman. Yeah. Or a fat guy. Or a fat <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to find myself. Saying thank you and a cheers to you, good sir. Cheers. We ask cheers. People cheers. That's it. Here, here. <laughs> thank you so much. Sipping time. See ya. Yep. See, See you soon.